WYCF, your local view on WVBK-CA, serving Manchester, Londonderry, Vermont, and South Charlestown, New Hampshire, and WVBQ-LP, serving Charlestown, New Hampshire, and Rockingham, Vermont. Coming up tonight on YCN, an ice jam causes water to rise in Claremont and forces people to evacuate their homes. New Hampshire state representatives are opposing a bill to make New Hampshire the third state to legalize and regulate the adult use of marijuana. And we'll hear from state representative Neil Kirk about some of the current budget issues. With more news and weather, stay tuned. It's time for YCN, your local view. Now your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that is happening in our area. The YCN News Hour, your local view. Welcome to our Friday edition of YCN. I'm David Carmichael. With the warm temperatures Thursday, crews spent the night keeping a very close eye on the Sugar River in Claremont because they were worried about flooding. A voluntary evacuation was issued for several homes Thursday after an ice jam formed, sending water rushing onto Beauregard Street. Unlike the gradual flooding seen from heavy rain, an ice jam can cause water levels to rise very quickly. No homes were damaged and the water had started to recede by nightfall. Special requests for more than a dozen social service agencies and community organizations, as well as two economic development groups, will be decided by voters on town meeting day in Springfield. The requests total $240,000. In addition to the special request, voters will decide whether to give each member of the select board $500 a year, an amount that dates back to the 1960s. One of the new agencies seeking funding is the Springfield Supportive Housing Program, which has been working in Springfield for seven years. The Claremont Savings Bank Community Center is getting a formal opening on March 2nd as the $10 million project nears completion. City Manager Guy Santagate said yesterday the center will have a ribbon-cutting ceremony and an open house on March 2nd with tours of the facilities starting in the last week of February. The center was set up to open on February 15th, but Santagate said problems with the flooring and the basketball court delayed the initial opening. The new center includes a swimming pool, a gym, functional rooms, and more to replace the aging Goodwin Community Center on Broad Street. Three finalists have been selected for the position of president of the River Valley Community College in Claremont. Peter Glenshaw of Lyme is presently director of corporate and foundation relations at the Vermont Law School. Dr. Susan Wyckoff of Oxford, Massachusetts has served as vice president of academic affairs at the College of Worcester Consortium in Worcester, Mass. since 2001. And Dr. Alicia Harvey Smith of Cantonsville, Maryland is vice president for the student affairs at Baltimore City Community College in Baltimore, Maryland, a position she's held for five years. Some New Hampshire state representatives are opposing a bill to make New Hampshire the third state to legalize and regulate the adult use of marijuana. The bill would legalize the possession of up to an ounce or less of marijuana and the private cultivation of a limited number of marijuana plants for adults 21 years of age and older. It would also allow for licensed and regulated marijuana retail stores in addition to licensed facilities to cultivate and manufacture marijuana. The bill is still in the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee and it is due to come out of the committee on February 21st, but no date for a public hearing has been scheduled. A 98-year-old New London woman has published her very first book. Margaret Kendall Thornton has published One Decade at a Time, a compilation of more than 50 years of fiction writing. She will be having a book signing Thursday, February 7th from 3 to 4 p.m. at the Woodcrest Assisted Living Facility. Colby Sawyer College is creating local solutions for global issues with a program called Transition Towns. Transition Towns is working toward greater sustainability by using ecological principles to promote diversity, stability, and resilience in our human and natural systems. In a positive, proactive setting, Transition Towns helps build relationships that harness people skills, talents, and passions to promote a vibrant local economy, greater access to local food, and reduced reliance on non-renewable energy. After the break, get some ideas about what to get your loved one this Valentine's Day and learn about New England's largest orchid show in February. The YCN News Hour continues in a moment. 